I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Senator Ted Cruz lambasted Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo at a Senate Commerce Committee hearing on Wednesday. Senator Cruz demanded to know why a Commerce Department press release used a, quote, term of propaganda pushed aggressively by the Chinese Communist Party. Take a listen here to see how the Commerce Secretary responded. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Secretary, welcome. Good morning. Um, for a long time, I've been very concerned about the Biden administration's foreign policy. Uh, foreign policy that consistently alienates our friends and shows weakness and appeasement to our enemies. Now, the Commerce Department, typically your mandate does not focus primarily on foreign policy. But I will say recently that uh, has been less the case. Uh, if you look at China, and your confirmation hearing focused quite a bit on your willingness to stand up to communist China and on the repeated decisions from the Biden administration to show weakness to communist China, the eyes of the world are on Taiwan. Under this administration, Vladimir Putin has invaded Ukraine. He's done so in significant part because of, I believe, this administration's weakness on foreign policy. And she in China is watching very carefully and quite openly contemplating invading Taiwan. So I was deeply concerned when the Commerce Department put out a press release that referred to Taipei as Chinese Taipei. Now, that is not a mild oversight. That is not a typo. That is not a mistake. Chinese Taipei is a term of propaganda pushed aggressively by the Chinese Communist Party because they insist Taiwan is not a country. Taiwan is not a separate entity. It is instead part of communist China. And for the Commerce Department to embrace the Chinese communist government's language about Taiwan, to put it in a formal press release, it both undermines our ally Taiwan and it emboldens communist China. So my question is, why would, would the Commerce Department refer to Taipei as Chinese Taipei? Yes, thank you, Senator, for your question. And by the way, the administration, including I, are clear-eyed about the threats to China, threats China poses to us, and I've been, I've been very strong in my tenure as it relates to China. They, Taiwan signed the declaration. Their signature, signatory line was as Chinese Taipei. So... This reflects no change in policy. It's how they chose to sign the declaration, and that's why it appeared that way in the press release. All right, let's turn to a different example. It's not just Taiwan that this administration undermines. It is our allies across the globe. When you turn to Israel, on April 16th, 2022, Vice President Kamala Harris held a Passover Seder at the Vice President's residence. They served kosher wine from the Sagat Winery located in Samaria near Jerusalem. This was apparently a huge scandal among the Biden administration's radical leftist base, which loudly and immediately complained. So the administration ran to Twitter and a senior advisor to the vice president posted this. The wine served at the Seder was in no way intended to be an expression of policy. Now, that's a pretty big deal. The issue of labeling Israeli goods and what goods are made in areas of Israel goes back decades. 
goes to the core of Israel's sovereignty over its territories. The Obama administration reissued a labeling order to prevent goods made in Judea and Samaria from being labeled as Israeli. So my question is simple. The vice president's staff said serving wine from an Israeli winery located in Samaria was in no way intended to be an expression of policy. Jurisdiction for this is within the Commerce Department. What is the administration's policy with regards to the labeling and the import of goods from Israel and its territories? I'm going to have to get back to you on that. And this is, uh, I was not aware of this, but I will follow up with you. And I will point out that in the Commerce Department, the Office of Anti-Boycott Compliance answers to you. Does this winery in Samaria count for you as an Israeli company and would participation in a state boycott targeting require scrutiny from the Office of Anti-Boycott Compliance? Yeah, like I said, let me look into this, and I'll, I'll be back to you with the details. Well, I look forward to your answer. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Senator you. Senator Peters.